everybody is, I'll tell you what, fully on board the Benjamin Sesco hype train. After his performance against Liverpool this week in the preseason, after all the reports that came out this week of Manchester United meeting his agent, John Murto meeting his agent, and Fabrizio Romano and Laurie Whitwell confirming that Man United are in talks to sign him. I want to do this video, a scouting report on Benjamin Sesco. I've taken a look at sort of the season he had with Liefering uh, and also how that went through into Salzburg to what we saw in the preseason. And we can start to understand why there is such hype around this kid. I love doing these videos. I hope you enjoy it. So please make sure you drop a like on the video if you do enjoy it. But, you know, let's all jump on board with the Benjamin Sesco hype train. I'll tell you what. It is exciting. As I said, John Murto met with his agent. He met Elvis. John Murto literally met Elvis last week. Elvis Basanovich. And I've already run through an interview with Elvis Basanovich in my video that I did a few weeks ago on Benjamin Sesco. I identified him as one potential target for Manchester United to look for. Because at 19, he, he he's, he's not yet the finished product. But what Manchester United scouts have got to get better at doing is identifying players like this when we can sign them for far less than what they're going to be worth in a few years' time. It's about signing players who can progress through. But let's go into the scouting report and let's try to understand exactly why there is so much hype and why Manchester United really are interested in signing Sesco this summer. I want to say a quick shout out to Total Football Analysis for the art to scouting report they've done. I've used a few of their stats. I've used a few of their pictures. And also, we're going to run through his performance against Liverpool. It should be a cracking video, I think. So anyway, but if you take a look at uh, uh, his stats from that season with Leifering, as I said, it's, it's not the fair. This is when he was 17, right? So this is when he was breaking through, not even in Salzburg, but in the second division there. And you can see far and away how much he stood out above the, the league median is the average player inside that league. And look at him. Non-penalty goals per 90. He's up there in the 96th percentile. He was just he, phenomenal. He was way, way, way above everybody else in terms of four passes. Yeah, 92nd percentile. The, the stats aren't really that important. It's more about how overall he plays. If you took a look at his heat map that year, you would see that he did sort of operate on the left-hand side of the penalty box. That's kind of where he goes into it. Interestingly enough there, had nearly four dribbles per 90. He's a player who loves to have the ball at his feet. And in terms of how he operates as a striker, we're going to run through his performance against Liverpool for some real evidence of the latest examples of that. But look, you can see here him being on the shoulder of players against the higher line and him here bursting away with pace. For somebody who's literally six foot four, it's ridiculous how much pace Benjamin Sesko had. But this next part, I'm going to run through this Liverpool performance. This is a really interesting one. There's lots and lots to take from it. But before I do, I want to say a big shout out to Manscaped. Just want to say big up to Manscaped for supporting United People's TV throughout this summer. And so I suppose supporting the landscape in the UK football space. Landscape, Manscaped, see what I did there? Anyway, this bad boy down here, it's the Performance Package 4.0. You know it by now. You get your Crop Reserver, boom. Your Crop Reviver, boom. Lawnmower 4.0, keeping all your goodies in good shape, but also the boxes 2.0 and that's the big important one here look look at these sexy bad boys you can get them in all different colors you've got gold you've got black or black and gold you've got silver everything you want extra breathability and right now given the heat waves going through the uk you definitely need a bit of these and don't forget about the jewel pouch as well even more breathability in the area you really need it all you got to do is follow the link in the description you get 20 percent off with united people's tv so big up to manscape for helping support united people's tv and they're trying to support you and your goods as well. So follow the link in the description. You'll, you'll thank me. So as I said, big shout out to Manscaped. And, and these sorts of uh, sponsorships and integrations can help make United People's TV that much bigger and better. And I can keep doing more videos like this. But let's dive straight into this performance that he put in in the preseason against Liverpool. Now, it's not actually Salzburg's preseason. This season started, but it's Liverpool's preseason. And the thing that impressed me so much about this performance, and we'll run through each key characteristic that we've seen, is he knew full well that all eyes were on him with the United reports and the links and obviously the contact with his agents. So he would have known about that. Probably one of the biggest stages he's had. And my, did he take to it. He took it, he took to it and performed and really sort of accelerated that hype train. You look here in terms of uh, parts of his game, him pressing. Look at the pressure that he's putting on the ball here. He's very much uh, an attacker who really has that pressing element. And that's something that Ten Hag will want and will need in any player that he signs. We've seen it in this preseason tour so far, and we will see it across the whole season. Martial, Rashford, Sancho, Bruno, press from the front. 
press with intent, win the ball high up the pitch, a bit like Martial in the first game. That's how he got his goal against Liverpool, won the ball back, boom, scored. That's something that's naturally part of Sesko's game. And of course, given his frame, one what I think is one meter ninety four, six foot four. He's got a lot of strength to his game here. This is an example of him just winning the winning the physical battle, getting there ahead of the getting their head, and boom, getting a chance out of it. Notice that he took that shot on his left foot. This guy is two footed, absolutely two footed. But I'm fully on board the hype train. I'll be completely honest. I was so impressed by. Just different characteristics that you saw in that game against Liverpool. There we focused on his strength and focused on his pressing. Here as well, it's about being in the right time at the right place. But look at this. Look at the composure on the chance that he took here. He's taken that. He could have shot there. Nope. Swing it back there. Pull it on his right foot. Round both players and forces a great save from the goalkeeper. Let's, let's watch it again here. Could have taken a shot there easily. Chance gone. No. Quick feet. Quick movement. Move it into space. And if not for a fantastic save, that would have been a goal. That's real composure. Uh, and, 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 with and as I said, he's taken that on his right foot, as, as, you sh as we showed earlier in the video, taking chances on his left foot. He really is a two-footed striker. And that sort of level of composure, to have that naturally at, at, at the age of 19, because it's kind of, I mean, it wouldn't be impossible to coach Dan somebody at that age, but it, to do that off instinct, that's what great strikers do. And speaking of instinct, the goal that he scored was equally as impressive for different reasons. You can see here, receiving the ball there, running into space. Look at the pace he's got. They can't catch up with him. Little quick one-two, opens a space, opens his body, fires it into the bottom corner. You can see here again, accelerating into that space. That pass takes the defender away, creates that space, that you but that opening of the body, there. That's such a fantastic technique. Side-footed. There's something, di there's something that feels a bit different when you see a striker with a side-footed finish. You know exactly what he's going for. He knows the exact part of the goal that he's aiming for. There's nothing lucky about it. He's opened his body up and he's created the best possible chance for him to score that goal. As I said, we look, we look again here. Running into that space and it's this pass here. Really intelligent that is because it takes the defender away from him. Makes it impossible to mark him. Really is and was a cracking goal by a, a player who really did shine. As I say, on, on, on the biggest of stages for him at that moment in his career. And obviously there's one highlight that a lot of people have been showing, but it goes to show how good his feet are as well. Look at that touch and look at that turn. That is dutty. Absolutely dutty. Whether or not he completely meant it, it's slightly irrelevant. Just, I mean, he definitely did mean that. Look at the feet on that. I mean, look, that's getting a rewind. That is definitely getting a rewind. Look at his touch. Oh, delicate. Turn. Woof. You filthy man. Unbelievable. But I tell you what, it really is not hard to understand why the hype is there. Manchester United being starved of attacking signings will make anybody look appealing. But a player like Sesco, you can see there at the age of 19, as I ran through there, and we covered every part of it. We took a look at him pressing. Uh, we took a look at the chance creation from the front with the strength that he's got. We took a look at him creating opportunities, opening his body up, left and right foot. We looked at, I took a look at his goal, and one more time, that open body position there. That's really, really accomplished. That's top level finishing, that is. And that dream footwork on the right hand side, you kind of saw it all in that game against Liverpool. He's got the pace, he's got the intelligence, he's got the acceleration, he's got the natural finishing, he's good with both feet. He can ask also, <laughs> great touch for a big lad. He really does. He's got a, a set of characteristics that you wouldn't expect of a player of his height. A player of his height, you would expect to be gangly and uh, not that strong, a bit lanky, a bit Peter Crouchy. That's not Benjamin Sesko. And you can fully understand why the hype is there. Salzburg clearly have got themselves another gem in the same way they had a gem with Erling Haaland. We all know what happened with Erling Haaland. He went to Dortmund, became the player that he, he became today, and now City have signed him. Will United go in for Sesko this summer? We're in talks with his agent. That has been confirmed. That happened last week. United, if we want to go and sign him, we're going to probably have to pay over the odds this summer. Because I don't think Salzburg wants to sell this summer. If we wanted to get him ne next year, we'd probably be able to get a deal for him that would be cheaper and then loan him back out to Salzburg. But as a lot of you fairly point out and correctly point out, United need new players now. We need new attackers now. Benjamin Sesko, maybe we can bring him in. But United are in talks. I hope you sort of understood a bit more about his game from that uh, big up to what was his name 
Abo Vardy on Twitter for doing that compilation of the um, preseason performance against Liverpool. I hope you don't get slapped down for copyright there. I hope I've been a fair use on that. But look, thank you very much, everybody. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. But Benjamin Sesco, I can completely understand that hype train. I tell you what, I'm fully on board. I'm fully on board.